So here we are in Kigali and we just got the rare opportunity to be able to film the great gorillas about a couple of hours drive from here. And remember, before we left Nairobi, we were told to take a COVID test, which we did. We landed in Kigali. We took another COVID test, which we turned out negative. But get this, in order for us to film the gorillas, we had to take a third COVID test. Why? Because the officials here say, those great apes are very, very sensitive and we want to make sure that we're healthy. So here we go. We're going to have a good time. Follow me. We get on board this state-of-the-art private air-conditioned bus for the trip of a lifetime. And head down the streets of Kigali, where a sudden feeling of nostalgia fills us of the Nairobi of the 1970s. Clean, pristine, picturesque. That's Nairobi, 50 years ago. There's a reason they call this place the land of a thousand hills. There are hills everywhere. Hills in front of us, hills beside us, hills behind us, hills everywhere. A couple of hours later, we arrive in the town of Musanze, deep in the country's north, nestled neatly between Rwanda, Uganda, and the Democratic Republic of Congo. This will be our overnight stop because the trek to see the gorillas begins in the early morning. Bishop's House is highly recommended here, owned by a Rwandan, run by Kenyans. By the way, they call it Bishop's House because the house once belonged to a bishop. True story. Dawn on day two. We are ready to scale the beautiful scenic rolling hills before us. A short drive and we arrive at the Volcanoes National Park. On arrival, it is the same strict vetting rules. IDs, passports, COVID-19 certificates. Now, at any other time, this would have been just a normal walkthrough. But during these times of COVID pandemic, you gotta take extra precautions. Temperature checks at the top, sanitizer everywhere, social distancing sites. It's the new normal, gotta always take precautions. Rwandans take no chances when it comes to their national treasure. As luck would have it, we run into former Ethiopian Prime Minister Haile Mariam Desalen and his family. He's been here before, they haven't. The former Prime Minister is revered here in Rwanda. He's even taken part in one of the most important annual events here, known as the Gorilla Naming Ceremony, or Kwita Inzira. So, uh... When newborn gorillas are baptized, yes, baptized by prominent personalities. He named his gorilla Umukuru, which means the old one, a tribute to a bull elephant that died in this park back in 2018. Volcanoes National Park, which is the name of our park now. We proceed to the briefing. Now, this is very important because professionally trained trackers painstakingly explain to every tourist exactly what to do and how to behave in the event that you come up close, as in very close, with the great apes. Now, folks, two things are essential if you're going to go up to the mountain to see the gorillas. You've got to have yourselves a good pair of walking boots and you've got to have yourself a raincoat because it rains here all the time. This is standard and everybody here does it. It's highly, highly recommended. But if you have a good pair of shoes, a good pair of hiking shoes, you can hack it. But they always recommend here to wear the boots. Weather's pretty good here, by the way. It's a beautiful day, usually pouring down. But it's always recommended, just have this just in case. The skies could open up at any one point. So, the best thing, just be prepared for the elements. Rain gear, check. Gum boots, check. Walking sticks, check. Trained trackers, check. 
We ask for and are graciously granted permission to walk with the former Ethiopian Prime Minister and his family. Our chances of a close encounter with the guerrillas have just increased exponentially from the average four or five hour walk down to half that. We're ready for the great walk now. It's going to be a walk up the mountain top into the territory of the great apes. And off we go. Following the keen eyed trackers and guides as they literally cut and chop a pathway for us through the thick jungle undergrowth. We wade through streams and cross many rivers over some waterfalls and keep walking and walking and walking. By the way, there are several dozen or so guerrilla families scattered across this dense forest that stretches for hundreds of kilometers across three countries. The guerrilla families move as they wish and sometimes, especially in this conflict-prone region, they may find themselves surrounded by all manner of danger. Hunters, poachers, or militias looking for food. This is one of the Rwandan government's biggest headaches here. Containing the guerrillas in one region and making sure that they are safe from harm. But the guerrillas don't know borders. And once in a while they venture onto the other side where death is almost guaranteed. Meanwhile, the trackers have spotted one guerrilla family, and we are given one last briefing. This is the three back. Do that. You sit. And then, in the thicket before us, just like that, is the king of this jungle. Cameraman Gregory Juma is quick to apply what he learned earlier in the briefing. Like the rest of us, he too realizes that this is a photo opportunity of a lifetime. The fatigue from hours of walking quickly disappears as we come face to face with one of nature's most incredible scenes. Meters away from us and almost like touching distance is an entire family of gorillas. I'm literally about 10 meters away from this family of gorillas. And it's 10 meters because it's the time of Corona. Had it been another time, they would allow about seven meters. But any way you look at it, this is as close as you get to being the presence of these great apes. And I tell you, there's no feeling like it. It's unbelievable. Look at him, just look at checking me out. Look at, you see that? It's just checking me out. Wow. Wow. The little ones are playful and so cuddly. Their mothers feeding beside them on nearby bamboos and other plants. The pitch black silverback male stands guard nearby. He is very aware of our presence and somehow instinctively knows we are a friend and not a foe. But that instinct could change in the flash of a camera. By the way, no flashes allowed. We watch them in awe and amazement. The same way one would watch a celebrity who happened to be this up close and personal. The former prime minister and his family are equally thrilled and awed as we are. I think this is fascinating. You can see, you know, closer to the gorilla and uh, the civil bark watching everybody. And sometimes uh, it looks angry, but you don't understand what's going on. And it's, it's really amazing. His wife is quick to notice the similarities between humans and one of our closest cousins. I like how they sit together in group in the family mm. form, so they protect each other. They get uh, closer and closer to each other while we get uh, while we approach them. So it's wonderful. 
Perhaps the only people not as excited as we are are the trackers, some of whom have been guiding tourists back and forth here for more than two decades. Since I've been here, I've never, I've never seen the same things. Every day looks different. So I've seen a lot of changes. The number of the grass have changed. So I have, mean have increased. Also, uh, also the number of tourists also have increased. Even the local community now, they do benefit from the income of the National mm -hmm. Park. It really have been a very big achievement for the last uh, 21 years. And so. It is a strange, almost symbiotic relationship of dependency. Seemingly unbothered primates in the middle of the African jungle, unaware of the imminent danger they are in, and also acutely aware of the excitement they generate in equal measure. And humans having to guard and protect them, not from other predators, but from other humans. This is Mother Nature at its most intense and its most ironic. It's almost as similar as the story of Rwanda itself. Beautiful but frightening, peaceful and painful, inviting yet foreboding, mysterious and elusive. It is a country of contrasts and contradiction. <laughs> Jeff Koinange, Citizen Television, Kinigi, inside the Volcanoes National Park in Northern Rwanda.